Welcome back to another thing. I'm Larry Menti. They call it nanny laws or the nanny state. Whatever, I don't even know if you call it a euphemism, whatever term you want to use to talk about laws that are passed or proposed to affect your behavior so you don't hurt yourself. Here to talk about that is Michael Carroll, who is a Republican from Morris County, thank you for being here, and Dr. Stephen Chapman, who is Assistant Professor and Director of Graduate Public Policy Program at Monmouth University. Thank you both. Uh, when I talk about a nanny state or a nanny law, is that already ascribing to a position because it, it kind of denigrates what comes next? Well, in a way, right? I mean, I think for some people, it, it elicits this idea of government overreach, right? And I think it, it depends on, on sort of your perspective and your preferences. Um, depending on sort of what you think of nanny law is, might not be what I think a nanny law is, might not be what your viewers think are nanny laws. Give an example of both. Okay. Well, I think a nanny law, right, I mean, usually people think of things like the sugar tax, right? The proposed sugar tax in Philadelphia, UK, the UK just passed a sugar tax in their budget. Um, some people can interpret that as, as a public good, right? Where we're doing this for, for a reason to bring societal level outcomes. On another perspective, people can think of it as, right, this is, this is pure government overreach. I think a lot of it also has to do with the elite messaging that we get. Most of the opinions that sort of your run of the mill people formulate are based off what they hear from elites, political elites. Right? So based on my political predispositions, right, I'm going to have a different opinion right, based on others, just just based on the on the um, the messaging that I'm receiving. I know someone that has a political predisposition. You have a political predisposition because you're a Republican from Morris County. Uh, do you think there is government overreach when it comes to these nanny laws? Oh, sure, but I had a predisposition before I was a Republican from Morris County. Uh, the idea is that, 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 again, as you said in your opening statement, laws that protect you from yourself. So Mike Bloomberg's proposed that you can't have a big soda or you can't add salt to something like those or calorie counts at McDonald's as if we didn't know how many calories were in that Big Mac we're about to consume. Again, the idea is, is that it treats people as if they were more or less idiots who, without the guidance and restrictions that government imposes upon us, let's say not pumping your own gas, would inevitably hurt or kill ourselves. And I, I think government ought to stand back a little bit and say basically, we don't always know what's in your best interests. And for us to say that we do is more than a little bit arrogant. But there are some good ones, right? I mean, wouldn't you agree that there are some, uh, there are some positive ones, for instance, no drugs. You know, if you if you you don't like that. Oh, I, I remember. I'm one of the sponsors of the law to legalize marijuana. And uh, again, the fact of the matter is, is that that is again a it was a whole to whole different topic. No, I understand. But, but what I'm trying to find, well, all I'm trying to find, and I, and I and I get your position on that. But what I'm trying to find is that there are some things. For instance, if you don't want secondhand smoke, the limiting of smoking inside of a public place. Do you think that these are necessary sometimes? Well, it depends, right? It depends on what you're looking at. I think it's a bit of an overgeneralization to think that, that these type of laws basically say that, that you're all idiots. I think that's, that's a bit misstated to say that, because what we're looking at is we're looking at societal level outcomes, right? Um, smoking is not only bad for the person smoking, but it's bad for the other people around them. Vaccines, right? If you choose not to get vaccinated, right, that's an individual choice that has it has consequences for the societal, the society level. Um, so to say that it's a good thing or a bad thing, I think sort of those normative arguments are, are where we get into problems. I think a better, a better structure is to think about things as say, what, are the, what does the science say? And not just one study, right? Not cherry picking evidence, but what does a body of evidence say? I think if you ask most medical professionals and, and sort of health scholars, they would say, well, secondhand smoking isn't a great thing. And this is why you see laws that, that curbed sort of the impact of that. You, since he mentioned you, you can respond directly to that. He said you overstated it. No, I always overstate. That's a politician's prerogative. But the, when I come back to smoking laws, for example, if, if the science is what we're going to look at, then we should ban it because it's clearly spectacular. Well, my, my, again, I understand that, but my point is it's spectacularly unhealthful. Uh, but then again, the question becomes one of do you have the right and effect to kill yourself? Uh, at the same time we're discussing c cigarettes and, and what they will do to you, we're proposing laws down in Trenton to permit assisted suicide, which is obviously bad for you. So it's the, at the end of the day, you, you look at the, the perspective of, uh, of the law, and science doesn't answer that question because science can't tell you what particular personal freedoms are good and what are bad. I think one of the, peop one of the problems that people have 
is that many times these so-called nanny laws are connected to money. And so if you tax sugar, it's a way of, t of increasing taxes and still taking a moral stand. And, and so what they think right away is that there's a little cynical. It's about changing incentive. Right? The, the, most inf the most fundamental assumption that I make and a lot of scholars make about human behavior is that people will maximize their own utility. Well, what does that mean? It means that everybody has their own preferences. I have my preferences, you have yours. Everybody has their own specific set of preferences. Um, we have a single peak preference that we want to maximize right, based on the context, what we're dealing with. Um, we tend to maximize that, not necessarily in a selfish way. That doesn't mean that everybody is selfish. It simply means that people maximize their utility. Why do people give to charity? Wouldn't make sense monetarily, right? It's, it's sort of um, counterintuitive, but we still see people doing it. Well, it's the reason that it is, is because they get a psychological benefit. They get utility out of that. So when you, when you sort of group all of these people together with individual preferences and try to come to a societal level decision or, right, we're going to curb pollution, whatever it might be. Um, and so you tax cars. Right, you, collective and, action and, tends and to so fall you apart. stop people cig uh, right. cigarettes, so you tax cigarettes. Right. It well, changes their utility, it changes their preference structure. And I think we have, yeah, to, we, we, well, we have to draw a distinction between the, the tax laws, which are designed, I think, to do what he was talking about, to, like, say, reduce the soda consumption, as it were, with a sugar tax, which is arguable. I mean, it's no worse than taxing anything else, particularly, uh, as long as it's designed to raise revenue, or tax cigarettes, which is designed to raise revenue, with the thou shalt nots of uh, you shall not buy a put of soda that's more than 16 ounces or what have you. I think there's a fundamental difference between those two. Uh, we do all the time use tax policy to affect societal outcomes, standard issue. Um, but I think there's a substantive difference between that and uh, the sort of uh, over, I guess you call them elites, the, the idea that the elites know better how to run your life than you do. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Assemblyman Michael Carroll, Republican Morris County, and Dr. Stephen Chapman, Assistant Professor and Director of Graduate Public Policy Program at Monmouth University. When we come right back. It's mating season in Philadelphia. The toad detour is a sure sign of spring.